Obviously, I mean, a, a tough trip for us. Uh, you know, you, you get a short week heading out uh, against a very good BYU team um, on a Friday night plus a uh, late night kick. Uh, I think it's 9 21 our time is uh, it's kickoff, so a, a, a different challenge, different style of challenge for our guys. Um, they're a handful. They had an excellent football team, very, very aggressive defense, guys that fly around the ball, uh, give you a lot of different blitz looks, high, big pressure team, um, come at you from a lot of different angles, a lot of different coverages, trying to confuse the quarterback, uh, and, uh, and a lot of movements on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, offense, you know, they got a six-year senior quarterback. I think he's six years uh, that he's been there. I know he's, he's suffered some injuries, but obviously is a is a great winner, great competitor, can run, throw, beat you a lot of different ways. Um, a tailback that is uh, a big-time player, some tough matchups at wide receiver. So uh, a great challenge for us against an excellent football team. And um, so uh, you know, we got we got to. Get ourselves ready to go. We got to play a very, very high level, execute at a high level in all three phases of the game. Um, I think our kickers—they're excited to go out there uh, and kick in Provo. I feel like they're going to get a little extra pop. They think on the ball. They said so. Uh, kicking with the altitude. So I think it's an ex it's an exciting game for kickers. Um, Questions? Questions? Speaking of that altitude, you talk about getting your players. I know you can't really do it in one or two days, but talk about. Yeah, I don't. I, I'll be honest. I don't know that it has much of an effect on you, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, on the game, I think it's more. It's more in your head uh, than anything else. So, um, I don't think it'd be a big issue for our guys. How have you had to change up the schedule this week with the short week? Well, you kind of lost the day. You know, Monday we practiced last night. You know, our kind of our Sunday wrap up practice, and then today's Tuesday. So you kind of. You, Monday disappeared on us, so there's no Monday this week. And then we're practicing at night, just with the game time kick. So we have actually gained a little bit more time preparation during the day, is what we're doing, and then practicing later at night. Talking about the highs and the lows can affect a young team on Saturday. How, how do you prevent the low from Saturday leading into this short week? Well, you know, they got to, uh, one, it's, they got to, Put it behind him. I mean, being a young team, it can help in some ways, and it can hurt in some ways. Uh, depends, you know, on them and the the attitude, the leadership of our older guys, how they handle it. Um, you know, and, and facing adversity. You know, the best uh, best way I know how to deal with adversity is to get back to work. Um, you know, and uh, since I've been here, that's always kind of been our deal. We've faced all kinds of highs and lows in uh, the eight years that I've been here, and uh, you know. It, I'll be honest with you, you deal with the high, you get back to work. You deal with the lows, you get back to work. <laughs> and uh, uh, so that's the mindset we've had with the guys on the team. You talked about the quarterback, Taysom Hill. What? Is there somebody you might compare him to just kind of watching him on film? Oh, boy. I don't know. I mean, he just, he's, a, he's a unique player, you know. Uh, like Tim Tebow in that way, you know, that he's, um, he's a physical run or will yourself to win guy, you know. Uh, you're not going to make dynamic plays running with the ball until all of a sudden he breaks into the open field and no one catches him. You know, he <coughs> runs physical and, and you think you got him in the pocket on, you know, he really shows up on third and uh, four, you know, all of a sudden or, or the game's on the line and he just finds a way to scramble, stay alive. And sometimes he'll tuck it, something run. Sometimes he'll throw a pass and, uh, and beat you that way. He just, you know, he's, he's got that, that it factor as a quarterback. You mentioned after the game that Kevon one day would play in the second half. You kind of expect to get him back? Uh, we'll see. Uh, I think, you know, he's, he didn't go yesterday, but we'll see as the week goes on uh, how he's going to be. You talked about the kickers earlier. You've had a different kickoff guy the last few games. Yeah. Is that just because of Logan Cook's knee? Or? Yeah, he had the, the knee issue, and he didn't think he could kick off. Uh, so, you know, we had to, to make a change there. So, you know, it just the, our, our, our kickers – I, it should be easy, but they've been banged up. Logan, or, uh, Logan obviously was dealing with the knee. Weston's been dealing with some back issues, so he hadn't he didn't practice the whole two weeks of the bye period. I uh, he didn't he, he practiced I think one day. Um, you know, so hope we're trying to get those guys healthy and get them through to, to be able to function in the game.
We've seen, uh, I think, early on, Gabe Miles with some drops, Fred Ross with some drops last week. Is that mental? Is that something else? I don't know. I, I think, um, I, I, you know what, I, I think it, it, it can become mental in the course of one game. Mm -hmm. I don't think it becomes mental in the course of extended game, you know. I think because um, you look at a guy like Fred on Saturday that gets just really frustrated with himself, um, you know, because he's a perfectionist, wants to do things right, and, uh, you know, and, and, and is the leader of the team, team captain. So I think, you know, he can he, he can really get himself frustrated. And, and um, like a lot of guys, I think when you get frustrated with things, you know, you say, okay, like I said, we get, you know, you deal with adversity, go harder, get back to work. Well, catching the ball is a skill, you know. So, I mean, you're not going to go harder at catching the ball. You're just going to, you know, do your skill. And um, so I think that sometimes the, the dropping a ball can get you frustrated because you want to work so hard. You want to, you I'm going to watch how hard I go catch the ball this time, and, and it, it can hurt you. During your time at uh, Utah, was there a game with BYU that maybe kind of stood out to you? Yeah, you know, right to them. <laughs> but is there anything you remember, out to me. remember from those two yeah, games? We had a 3 nothing game that was for the Mountain West Championship in Provo. Uh, it was uh, in the middle of like a blizzard. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm definitely exaggerating if you check the history books, but it <laughs> certainly felt like it was about 20 below zero in the middle of a blizzard. Uh, and we ended up winning 3 nothing. Uh, and then the next year, um, College game day was at uh, Rice Eccles Stadium in Utah, uh, and um, the last game I coached at Utah, we, you know, we had the Fiesta Bowl. Um, but I mean, at the end of the game, I remember a minute to go, the, both the, the entire student section was already on the field. There were tocitos being thrown everywhere. It was the first um, non-BCS team to go to a BCS Bowl that day, and uh, so both of them were pretty memorable games. When you went back and looked at the film of the Auburn game, I know you talked about building this program on relentless effort. Did you see a lot of that when you went back and looked at yeah, it? Yeah, you know, like I said, I, I, it was very similar to what I saw after the game. I think our, our effort um, is, is, is fine. You know, I mean, look at the second half of the game. I think, you know, we come out in the second half and outscore them in the second half. You know, it's not like guys are just saying, hey, well, I'm, I'm good. Uh, it is, it's, it's learning the maximum level of strain. I think there's, you know, guys, they play with great effort. Um, but I also think there's a strain level that you have to hit that sometimes guys got to figure out how to play at that level every snap. And I watch older guys, some of them do, younger guys do sometimes, not other times. And when you point it out to them, I, you know, I... I mean, you can get after them all you want and say, but what, you know, is that as fast as you can go? You know, and they'll be like, you show them two plays in a row of them, you know, back to back, and one they're going a little bit harder than the one before. And in their mind, they didn't notice that. You know, whether it's their thinking, whether they're not sure of their assignment, whatever it may be, uh, there's something unconsciously that, that does that. And, and, you know, with a lot of younger players, that happens. Jumping off that question, what's the learning curve for a young team to learn those, that, that type of stuff? Well, you never know because it, it, it's a lot of those are independent things, you know. I mean, I, I, I you coach guys that they're just born with it, you know. I mean, that's the, all they know is that. Uh, there's some guys it takes two or three years to, you know, to really learn to maximize. Because, you know, you look at a lot of these guys, most of them were um, not meant to be a negative comment, but... Most of them were like the, were the best players on their high school team. They didn't have to go unbelievable. They didn't have to maximum strain themselves to be successful in high school because they were physically more gifted than most of the people they were playing against. That's not the case. Um, you know, you're going to play against an Auburn team, and, and they have talent at every single position. They have five-star players everywhere. So your strain level has to be at, at, at be maximum. And and. When you're a young player and you you know you haven't had to play that hard every snap and you've always still been successful, even though you think you're pushing yourself harder than you ever pushed yourself in before, you still have a lot more that you can go and you can give to uh, to maximize yourself, and that just comes with development. You went back and watched the film. How do you think Seth Giles did coming back first game? Yeah, he did okay. Um, he did okay. I, you just saw. I, I didn't see errors. You just saw him. You know, I mean, getting himself back into it and. Um, 
you know, he played a play some man coverage and he kind of played off some. You know, I mean, just I think he played a little bit more conservative than he'd like to, but just getting his feet back, um, you know, get his feet wet a little bit on the field. You mentioned that learning curve a little bit. How do you, what's your philosophy on uh, being patient with a guy when he's out there on the field and when's the time to, you know, put somebody else in there? How, how do you draw that line? Well, we rotate a lot of guys, you know, and so that's why you see it. So, I mean, there'll be, you know, for us, we rotate tons of guys out there on the field uh, it, at a lot of different positions. So, you know, we tell them, hey, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to watch, and the harder you go, you know, this week, the more reps you might get next week. You might get another role. You might get a couple more reps on the special teams. Um, I think there's so many things that, that just kind of probably go unseen to the um, just to the regular person watching a game. You know what I mean? Nobody's watching the fold on kickoff. You know what I mean? And, and, but that's a critical, critical role in how you fit and how hard you go. Um, you know, I mean, left guard on punt is not a big celebrity position. Uh, but a really, really important one, you know, watch, see what happened if our left guard wasn't out there one play. Probably the game would turn pretty quickly on you. Um, <clears throat> but as, as guys learn those things and they see it and you, they see it and they practice it, uh, they, and, and we tell them, hey, you know, you go hard, you're going to get a couple more opportunities. You don't go as hard. You're, you're given an opportunity, you don't take advantage of it, you're going to have some taken away. Kind of springboard and all that. Uh, Keith Mixon. Called a touchdown mm -hmm. pass yeah. late in the game when we were trying to battle back a little bit. He did it with us a little bit after the game, but it sounds like he's a guy that kind of gets it. How can a young kid like that kind of help everybody else? Well, I think, you know, I mean, one, he's a dynamic player. He's a hard worker. Um, and he's a guy that I, I think you're, you're seeing take, you'll see throughout the year, continue to take big strides. He was high school tailback uh, that moved to a, a, a slot receiver, which, you know, we've had several of those guys in the past uh, do that. And, you know, what you see with a guy like Keith Mixon is all of a sudden he has the ball in his hand, and it's wow. Um, but they still learn to be a route runner, blocker, a lot of things he didn't have to do in high school. You know, he, he, he's, he's got the ball in his hand, what to do with that down, you know, because he did a lot of that in high school. Um, is learning to be the complete player. And so I think you're seeing him take strides in his route running, you know, getting open on a route, catching a ball in tight coverage. Uh, and then... You know, you saw after the you know the catch, he had a, you know he had some some big yards after the catch on on Saturday uh, in his reception. So uh, he, I, I think he's a guy that uh, I, I'm pleased with him. We we thought coming in he'd be a guy that we'd be excited to watch play this year, uh, and he's turning into that. When you got the guys back out of practice last night, did they respond the way that you had hoped? Yeah, you know, I, I the um, I think you know one of the things. Uh, I got to convince them. They, not, not convince them. They just with the short week of them is kind of the schedule's a little bit different of just trying to figure it out and get comfortable with that. But um, yeah, I thought. I mean, I thought our attitude was good um, by the you know the, the guys on the team last night. When you look at third downs, obviously, is, is there one thing you've you've kind of seen, or is it maybe a, a yeah, mix, you know, mix of things? Or what do you think it is? Yeah, there's well, they, they, I wish it was one. If there was one thing. That'd be pretty easy because you can you, you fix the one thing, you know. Um, when it's multiple things, you're trying to fix multiple things. You know, are we, are we putting, you know, are we, are we protecting the quarterback the right way? Are we making the right calls in the right situations? Are we getting looks we expect to see? If not, why are people playing us a certain way on third down? Um, and, you know, and, and it, it is a... There, there's been a wide range of things going on, you know, and it, uh, the biggest one, just, most things just come, a lot of it comes down to execution. Um, there's a lot of moving parts. you got 11 guys. If 11 guys do their job, 11 guys do their job every play. Um, you have a chance to be successful. If 10 do their job the right way, uh, and one makes a mistake or goes the wrong way or doesn't use good technique or, you know, one of those things, I mean, your chance of success drops dramatically. And so it, it is that that clean execution of everything that we do. BYU ranks one of the top of the nation in red zone conversion rate. You guys have struggled that a little bit. How important is that matchup and what can you do to improve in that area as well? Well, you know, one, again, we have to execute down there. We've had, I mean, some just, well, you know, I mean, I can... Tell you, missed reads, 
uh, missed blocks, poor protection, drop passes, you name it, we've checked the box uh, and what not to do in the penalty, you know, what not to do in the red zone. Uh, but, so for us, we got to execute better. The, the challenge with them is when you have a quarterback like they have down there, that's another weapon in the red zone. Um, it, it's, it, it makes them a very, very dangerous dream. they got, they got, a, they got a, uh, a, a, an excellent running back. They got size on the outside of receivers, and then if you try to take that all away, they have a guy that can make it happen on his own at the quarterback position, and that's what you know. Um, to be honest with you, when we've had great red zone offenses, that's a, that's a good recipe for it right there. You look at Nick Fitzgerald's attempts. I went back and looked, and Dak was kind of younger. He didn't throw the ball 35, 40 times. Nick, yeah. Nick's up there. Is that is that how you envisioned it going, or has it been kind of just what's happening? Uh, well, that part of it is the game, how the game's playing out, uh, what we're doing, who we're trying to get the ball to uh, out there on the field and spread it around a little bit more. Uh, you know, uh, I think probably at this point of his career, and Nick might throw the ball a little better than Dak did at this point of his career. So, um, you know, the, the uh, Dak was developing as a passer at this point in his career. So, uh, probably all of the above in those things. And going over the, the young team, you knew you didn't have to run, you didn't have to equals, you didn't have all those the starting corners. Did you kind of expect that there might be a, a slower start than, than years past? Yeah, well... I, I, you know what? You never know what to expect. I'll be honest. With you. The one thing I've, I've come to learn is you can't expect anything because you never know what to expect of how guys are going to respond to situations, how guys are going to perform. Um, I think there was certainly concern when you lost all the leadership. You know, it is, we've built this program on a developmental program. You know, and you look and there's, I think, eight senior starters we're expecting to have out on the field that we haven't had on the field really this year. Um, it's going to be a, like I said, I don't know that I expected it, but it was certainly going to be, there were a lot of questions in my mind coming into how guys would respond, how quickly guys would develop, how they would grasp on the roles, and uh, uh, especially early on in the season. As a coach, is there any way to prepare for those questions when you, you lose it to run your unique Would you expect to be back, Gus Wally? You expect to be back. I know a lot of people want to recruit, but you <laughs> Will you Coleman. Do that. You know, yeah. I mean, there you got Will Coleman. You got Talando with injuries. Said with, in, you know, you never, you know, it, it's football. You know, I remember hey, a couple years ago. Um, you just go back a couple years ago. We had a really young football team. We got devastated with injuries. Had to, you know, this was only what three seasons ago. Had to start three different quarterbacks throughout the season. You know, I mean, it was just. You know, you're like, okay, we got a young team. We got to take some time to develop these guys, and then all of a sudden, the guys you needed out there were injured, and he started slow. Then all of a sudden, we started to build at the end of the season, and um, went on a huge winning streak after that. Um, and and that happens sometimes. I mean, I I want to win every game. <laughs> you know, you get our locker room. Everybody wants to win. I mean, they they're they're in there working to go win every game. But you know, in, in reality. I don't. Nobody's won. Newt Rockney didn't win every game, and um, so I don't think very few people have gone through their four-year college career, even players that have uh, won every game. And so, even though you want that, you're going to have to deal with with the, with adversity at some point. Uh, and it's just how the guys deal with it, how they cope with it, and what their response to it is. You know, I mean, you can. Uh, said that the best way of dealing with adversity to me is buckle it up and get back to work um, and try to get better. Uh, that's, uh, I'll be honest with you, I mean, I, I, one of the goals we do with the guy, and I tell our guys that, if we, they can figure that out here, they're going to have a chance to be real successful in life because they're going to be facing adversities throughout their life, no matter, you know, nobody's life's a cakewalk. I mean, it, it is, uh, I mean, you deal with adversity all the time in life. And if you're going to sit and mull over your adversities and what's going bad and what was me, you're going to realize it's going to either get worse or it's certainly not going to get better. Um, you get back to work, you got a chance to fix it. And so those are just life, life lessons that these young kids get to learn. Kind of off that, it seems, you know, maybe it might be more difficult now with Twitter, Facebook, everything that 
the, the negativity is right there for players to hear. Maybe 10, 15 years ago it wasn't. How do you deal with that as a coach well, trying you, to block that out for them? Yeah, it, it, you know, it, it's noise. You know, it, there's so much more noise on the outside. You know, used to be like you guys would write an editorial. Now everybody writes them. You know, I mean, right? I mean, I'm making it look like it. I guess it's like calling plays, right? You know, I mean, everybody can call a play. That coaching stuff, you hear I guess if you check my Twitter, the coaching doesn't seem real hard, right? <laughs> but if I guess if you check my Twitter, the editorials aren't real hard either. Everybody can write one. <laughs> um, you know what? You just got to, honestly, the, the kids and what they have to do is block it out. You know, I, I always say is, anybody that, did anybody, no, I remember, I remember my dad used to, when I, when I was a kid, I tell him this story all the time. I, 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 now you've answered my dad, but I'd go play a game. He'd be like, well, why were you doing this? Why were you doing that? I said, how do you know what I was doing? Were you at practice all week? You have no idea what was going on out there. You didn't even know the game plan. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, one of the things you have to tell them is, is when you're in that room, everybody knows in that room. They're, we're, we're sitting there studying the film. You know when you played well. You know if you played poorly. You know if you give great effort. You know that you can improve. The hard one is all the noise on the outside, you know, and... Uh, And it's tough, and, and some guys struggle with it more than others. Of, you know, of like, oh, you know, well, this is happening, that's happening. And, and boy, it, 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 when the reality is right here, you go turn on the film, sit in the meeting, go out to practice, the reality hits you in the face every single day of where we're at, what we need to do to improve uh, everybody within the building. And what you have to do is, is learn to live in the reality, not in the perception world, live in the real world of what actually is going on. Kind of considering all that, uh, when you think about the guys that you lost in, in Twitter and Facebook and all, all the social comments and stuff, would you say that this year might be your most challenging job at, since you've been at the City State? Um, I don't know. I mean, it was, it was a challenge a couple of years ago. I know that. Uh, every year, though, brings, I, I don't know that it's, it's, it's different. There are different challenges. I'd say this. Um, the challenge with all the other stuff is the expectations around here have changed. You know, when, when I came, I think when I got here, the expectations were, you know, hey, if we can go to a bowl game every once in a while, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> that's certainly not the expectations within our program now, which is, which is the, you know, as I guess if I was at my press conference here eight years ago, that which what we were trying to get changed, change what the expectations within the program are. Uh, and we have. And, um, you know, and, and now these young guys, I'm fine. You know, I mean, I guess I, I've kind of been through good and bad. I mean, I, I, I was laughing. I remember I remember being in a locker room my first year in Kentucky. I think we got a big win to push our record to like three and five. I mean, you should have seen the kids dancing in the locker room and all. I mean, and I tell our guys that now. You know, and um, – the expectations of the players have changed. Mine, it's still, you know, we're sitting there working, trying to improve, trying to develop players. But I do think that they expect, um, they have they have bigger expectations or pressure or from the outside or whatever, of not just themselves, but on the, of both themselves and outside to perform. And uh, so that makes it challenging, but it's every year brings, brings a, a different challenge. This year is just a, a last year was a challenge. You know what? Hey, the year before that was a challenge. Guys, you know, I mean, what are we, five games into the year so far? So, you know, go back two years ago, we were dealing with a challenge of getting ready to be number one in America, you know what I mean, and, and dealing with being the best, the number one ranked team and, and the challenges that that brought. Um, so every year just is a different challenge. And, you know, our, our job is to develop the players, keep them focused, try to get them to perform the best, uh, to their best um, on Saturday. Kind of jumping off that too, do you feel when you're, you're talking with fans, us, the media, whoever, that you're kind of competing against that 04, uh, 14 team, 15 team, rather than BYU or whatever, that the, the expectations there, you always have to play those teams and meet up to those expectations? Um, I, I don't feel that, you know, I mean, I'm looking at how, how, how can we go find a way to beat BYU this week, you know what I mean? Um, now, I think I have to be aware of what goes on for all the players on the outside and, and that stuff, you know. Uh, 
the hey, we had a great year here. You know, we've had some great years here um, since I've been here, and uh, we're going to have a lot more great years while I'm here. And might this this year might end up being one of those years. You know, you never know uh, how it's going to play out. But all you can worry about is focusing on this week's game, improving this week, and keeping ourselves. We're you know, worry about how hard can we go, how well can we execute the play that we're running um, right now. And you know, and today our preparation. We have the right game plan. We put the guys in the right position. Are the guys executing at a high level? Are we practicing with the intensity we need to improve as a player? Uh, all of those things. Are we going to play a better game um, this week than we did the week before? You know, are, are we are we in, are guys improving? Or are we making the same mistakes? Uh, those are things that we have to worry about. And um, it, if you get caught up in too much of the big picture of everything on a daily basis, then you're a wisher, not a wanter. You know, I mean, a wanderer's going to go do something. A wisher sits there and dreams about what it could be like. A wanderer gets up and gets it done.